So instead of, instead of, come on through, instead of reading her bio, which you can do by looking at her website, yep, it's right here, very good. Instead of reading her bio, I thought we would get deeply personal first. So I want to know what, what is your comfort movie? Comfort movie? Yes. I have to say The Wizard of Oz. Okay. There's so many things you could learn from The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're looking right there in your own backyard, like things like that. I love that movie. Okay. Next question. What are you most proud of professionally? Um, wow. I can't mention any names or specifics, but about 10 or 15 years ago, I had a guy that was $800,000 in the hole and literally had the, the IRS in his yard, counting his vehicles, going to seize everything to pay off this $800,000 in taxes. And uh, he just had some medical issues that got out of hand and uh, I got on it and I got him out of pretty much all of it. <laughs> I think he wound up paying zero. That's a lot so, of incredible. I'm gonna let you make sure that we are not in that situation. So take it away. Okay, so uh, I'm Diane Haggerty. I'm an enrolled agent. Uh, can everybody hear me? If you can't, Turn it up a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. Okay, um, I'm an enrolled agent, which means I'm licensed by the IRS. I'm not a CPA, which is licensed by the state. I'm licensed to represent people in all tax matters. If you have a tax problem, I'm the person you wanna see. Uh, my office is in Springdale. A lot of people recognize me and be like, oh, you're down on the square. Haven't been on the square for about a year. I'm downtown Springdale now, uh, university owned the building and didn't renew anybody's lease. Okay. Um, anyway, I've helped over a hundred people start businesses, uh, like set up LLCs and all this stuff you're probably going to think about and things you've looked at online and be like, oh, I need to do this. Like, yeah, you may or may not need to do this. Um, but first I want to start out with y'all are brave for coming here tonight. Most people are so afraid of paying taxes or learning anything. They're just like, I don't know what to do. Oh, I just save all my receipts. And Okay. So we're not gonna like learn how to do tax returns tonight. We're just gonna learn about taxes, what you need to know and what decisions you need to make and what's gonna benefit you the most, okay? So um, I left my clippies on here and I can't turn the page. Hold on a second. I'm gonna be going really fast. So I'm gonna ask everybody if you have questions, like real questions about, write it down, put it in your phone. Ask me at the end. We're going to have quite a Q&A at the end. If you can't hear me or you didn't understand what I just said, I need to slow down. Uh, then raise your hand and say those things. Don't hold that back. But I want to make sure everybody can hear me. But other than that, if you can hold your main questions, like about your own business, to the end, I will not leave. Everybody's questions are answered. I don't care if we have to go out to the parking lot. We get thrown out here. I will answer everybody's questions before we go. Okay? So save all your questions. All right. Uh, just have to remind everybody, follow me on social media. I got to say these things. Follow me on YouTube. Subscribe to my blog. You'll learn a lot of stuff. Okay. So taxes are art. People are like, no, they're not. Taxes are scary and boring. And no, no, no. Actually, when you make your own money, it's not like a W-2 job. Not at all. W-2 job, this is how much you made. This is how much you paid in taxes. This is what you owe. End of story. It is not like that. There's no taxes held out. You're in charge of it. So what do you deduct? How much profit? You have to know all these words. Where do you report it? Taxes are art. It's like a big puzzle. Okay, so why do I feel like I'm an artist sometimes? Well, I am. I mean, I do other stuff, but you know, you have to get creative sometimes. Like I need to know how to handle an auditor. I need to know what to put in a letter to convince the government that you don't owe this money or that they made a mistake, which is like every day. If you think the government doesn't make mistakes and you owe money when you get a letter, <laughs> often it's not. So I got to figure out how to advance the slides. There we go. Here's our puzzle. You're going to see this puzzle a lot. I'm going to break it down into four pieces, but this is the things we're going to talk about tonight. But first, but first, we're gonna talk about bookkeeping, okay? You probably have no bookkeeping. How many people here have taken an accounting class? Zero, wow, like four? That's amazing. Okay, most people haven't taken any accounting or have any clue how to keep their books, what numbers to keep, what, what they're supposed, nothing, okay? And that's who, I'm that's who I'm really talking to tonight. So bookkeeping is everything you earn, 
minus everything that it cost you to make that money. And that's your profit, hopefully. Sometimes we have a loss, um, which you need to know to figure that out. Because if you're looking at, okay, well, I spent, you know, eight bucks on paint and eight bucks on a on a canvas. So I got $16 in this painting. No, you really don't have $16 in this painting. You had to drive to the store. You had to go to the craft fair. You had to pay the fee at the craft fair to sell it. All those costs we have to take into account. So you need to know, you need to know what you don't know, right? Okay. So this applies. I'm going to go with, are you a business or are you a hobby? I don't care if you're a business or a hobby. You need to keep track of your costs and see what everything costs you to make sure you're charging enough. Because I see that a lot too when people are starting out. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to sell this painting for like, you know, 20 bucks. Like, don't sell a painting for 20 bucks. Just don't. Um, sorry about that. Um, taxes are um, what we call compartmentalized. They're little boxes. Okay, so your bookkeeping for your business or your hobby, your art, is going to be separate from your capital gains income, your W-2 job, your spouse's income, all your, you know, your investment earnings, if you have any. All these things are calculated in different amounts. A lot of them are taxed at different rates. So you need to keep track of what your art income and expenses are versus all your other income. It's not just figure it all out at the end of the year. Like you need to keep track of it as you're going along. So that's bookkeeping. So now we're going to look at deductions versus cost of goods sold. Words you probably don't have a clue what they mean or why they're different or why it matters. So let's get into that. What's the difference between deductions and cost of goods sold? Okay. On the left is deductions. Deductions are business expenses. Okay. So you have to be a business to have business deductions. They're subtracted from your business income on a tax return. And there's many types of expenses. Mileage to get places to go to the store, advertising, all your little Facebook ads and stuff, software. So you need, how many people here subscribe to Adobe? Let me see, like literally everybody, right? Okay, so <laughs> how many people subscribe to Microsoft 365, right? Like literally everybody, okay. So all those things cost money. That's business expenses. You can't operate your business without those things. Um, software, like again, the same kind of things. Meetings. Did you get mileage to come to this meeting? Did you come here to learn about taxes? Oh, guess what? Your mileage driving here or your cab fare or whatever, guess what? That's tax deductible if you're a business, okay? Communication, a lot of people forget about their phone bill. Okay, so those things are business deductions. The right-hand side is cost of goods sold. So what is cost of goods sold? You must be selling goods to have a cost of goods sold, okay? You have to be selling things, okay? So if you're a performing artist, musician, actor, dancer, uh, uh, photography kind of goes in there too a little bit because some, some photographers really don't sell anything Hard copies. So if you are selling hard copies, that's one thing, but a lot of them just sell online. So you don't really sell any things with photography. So if you're a performing artist and you don't really sell things, you don't have cost of goods sold. I know that bookkeeping software like QuickBooks and stuff is like, oh, cost of goods sold. Yeah, everything's cost. Of no, 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 no. Cost of goods sold is only if you're selling things. So if you're selling paintings or sculptures or hard photographs, right? or portraits or whatever. Yes, ma'am. Lessons? Lessons as no, you are not selling a thing. You are teaching a skill. So you have selling a thing to have cost of goods sold. And there's a reason, I'm getting to the reason why this is so important that you need to keep cost of goods sold separate from business deductions. Cost of goods sold is only the cost of the good you actually sold. So the ink, the paper, that's it. Not the work that went into it, not the software, just the things you're selling. So uh, I have a potter that she goes down to the river and digs up her clay. What's the cost on that? Zero. Okay. Mileage to go pick it up. Okay. Yeah. It costs her money to go pick it up. So that's part of it. But she paid zero for that. So her cost of goods sold is zero for the clay. She still has to talk about the glaze and the paint and 
I don't know anything about pottery. But anyway, that stuff. And it's calculated after you sell. So if you spend a whole bunch of money making a whole bunch of art, you don't sell any of it, you really don't have any cost of goods sold. It's the stuff after it's sold. Now, why is this important? Um, I'm looking at my notes here, I'm sorry. It might seem like it's not a big difference, but the cost of things that you sold, you can deduct if you are a hobby, okay? If you are a hobby, we're gonna talk about the difference between a business and a hobby. If you are just operating as a hobby, you can deduct your cost to get sold. Most people don't realize you can deduct anything when you're a hobby. Most time when there's hobby costs, it's just like, oh, you don't get to deduct hobby costs. It's 2%. No, no, no. You can deduct your cost of goods sold from your hobby. So if you're selling art, you can deduct the cost of that and not be a business. And we're going to talk a lot about why you want to be a business, why you don't want to be a business in a little bit. So cost of goods sold is not a deduction. It is an adjustment to income. And there's a very fine line that means nothing. I get a lot of glazed looks like so. The entire marijuana industry is based on this. The federal law says you cannot take any business deductions if you're growing and selling marijuana, but you can take cost of goods sold. So there's accountants in Oklahoma. Uh, I, I stepped away from that because it's way too complicated and too far away, but there's a lot of accountants in Oklahoma that their whole thing is figuring out how much it costs to grow and sell and how much, you know, what their cost of goods sold is versus that. So it is, it might not seem like a huge thing now, but if you're a hobby, you can deduct your cost of goods sold and nothing else. If you're a business, you can deduct all your costs. So, and it's a very fine line, but you need to know the difference between those two things. All right, let's start on time. Oh, we're doing great on time, look at that. So this is another thing that we're gonna talk about. Again, if you're a business or a hobby, it'll all tie in, I promise. It'll all fit together like puzzle pieces at the end. Income tax or self-employment tax. Income tax, you pay it on what? Your income, right? Everybody pays income tax. If you have income, you pay income tax, okay. And it's based on everything added together. Your income, your spouse's income, your, you know, your investments, your W-2 job, all that stuff added together, everybody pays income tax. Spouses added to it, 12,000 plus earning threshold. I think it's actually 13,600 for 2023. Uh, so if you earn less than that, guess what? You get a deduction of $13,600 per person. If you make less than that, you don't pay any income tax. Great, and you're low income. Um, so there's a big gap. And that's most what people call doing your taxes. When you come to see me or you come to see anybody else, you do it online on h &R Block or whatever, that is your income taxes. Now, self-employment tax. Probably haven't heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, how many people out here know what self-employment tax has got hit with it? Couple, couple. Yeah, it's scary. You go calculate. It's like, oh, I made less than $12,000. How could I possibly owe anything? Self-employment tax. Oh, that's what it gets you. So when you have, so it's your social security and Medicare. It's not an income tax. It goes to a different department. Uh, with your job, when you have a W-2 job, you pay seven and a half percent. Your employer matches that, pays seven and a half percent. Need to back up. I just realized I cut my own head off on the Zoom. Uh, when you're self-employed, you're the employer and the employee. Oh no, you get to pay both halves, 15%. So whatever your profit from your, if you're a business, whatever your profit from your business is, that's 15% on top of that, that you pay in self-employment tax. It has a $400 earning threshold. So if you wind up making 500 bucks at the end of the year on your art, you worked all year, you sold all the stuff, you worked your butt off with your art, you wind up making 500 bucks all year. Guess what? You owe 15% of that 500 bucks to the federal government. Social Security and Medicare. What? Not even kidding about this. This is why it's so important to know if you're a business or not. Okay, because we're going to talk about self-employment tax a lot. But again, it's only on your business income, not all your other income. So just your business income is taxed for self-employment tax. Now, are you a business or are you a hobby? 
This is the, one of the big ones we're going to work up to here. If you are a business, you can take all your business deductions. Losses are allowed. So say you went, um, let me keep backing up. Say you spent a whole bunch of money on frames. Say you're, you're a painter and you found a canvases on sale. You bought a whole bunch of canvases and a bunch of frames and you found some paint on sale and you bought a whole bunch of paint. You have all this stuff, but you can only paint so fast. You need some inspiration. It takes some time to get it. So you finally start painting. You really haven't sold that much, but you spent a ton of money buying all the stuff that was cheap. You could actually have a loss if you're a business. You could spend more than you make and have a negative number. That negative number comes off the rest of your income when you pile it all in the same pile on your tax return. That negative number will actually bring down your W-2 income. Okay, So your losses are allowed if you're a business. Self-employment tax on the profit. Ooh, if you have a profit, you self-employment tax. We just talked about that, 15%. Uh, if you're a business, your business profit counts as earned income. Who has kids? Any, no, not too many. A couple kids, earned income credit, right? You want to get earned income credit, child tax credit. You have to have earned income. If you're not doing anything else and you're just making art and you're a business, you want to get earned income, you probably want to be a business if you need earned income credit, right? And if you're a business and you are selling things or doing photography, photography is a special one, uh, whether you're selling things or not, you are, sub you are subject to the laws for sales tax. You need to be collecting sales tax and sending it into the state every month, whether you have sales or not. So if you are selling paintings and you are a business, you need to be collecting sales tax if you're selling it in the state of Arkansas. So what if you're a hobby? Hobby, you don't get to take any deductions. Just your cost of goods sold. Losses are not allowed. So if you spend it all, you can't go into negative numbers with a hobby. But no self-employment tax. Also does not count for earned income. If you're trying to get earned income for earned income credit, child tax credit, hobby income doesn't count as earned income. And no sales tax liability. The law in Arkansas says that if you are engaged in business and selling tangible objects, you collect sales tax. If you are not engaged in a business, you don't need to collect sales tax, that much less paperwork for it. So that's the differences. Now let's look at, how do you know? How do we know? How are, so the IRS says that your, if you're a business, the main thing is an intent to make a profit. Well, how do you prove intent? Can they read your mind? Are they mind readers? No. So they need to know things that look like intent. So are you advertising? Are you saying, hey, look at all these great paintings. So let's talk about intent just a little bit more so you understand. I still got a lot of, People looking at me like, what? Okay, so <laughs> intent. So why are you making your art? Are you like, I'm gonna make all these things. I'm gonna make all this money. I'm gonna do this craft fair. I'm gonna do this craft fair. I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna do down here. I'm gonna do all these weddings. I'm gonna do all these, okay. That's an intent to make a profit. A hobby is you wanna make art. You love making art. There's art left over. You have to sell it to get rid of it. It's a self-supporting thing. Your goal is not to grow your business and make a ton of money. Your goal is to make art, okay? So how do they prove intent? I mean, like, how do they know what you're thinking? They don't. So things that we're looking at is advertising. Do you have a website? Is it like John Smith art, buy my stuff. Look at all this great stuff I do. Okay, so if you're doing that, you're the IRS is gonna look at you like a business and so will the state. And the other one that uh, is, is there any financial risk? Do you have a lot of money tied up in it? Do you owe people money? Do you, uh, do you have people helping you? Do you hire help? I have a few people I know. I know at least one here hires help. Um, do you hire people to help you with your stuff? Do you owe them money? Do you have helpers? Do you sign up for shows that you pay in advance to attend? Craft shares, things like that. So if there's any kind of financial risk or any kind of advertising, it's going to look like you're intending to make money, like you're not making art for art's sake and just selling off what you have left. So it's not what you can 
really happened. It's what you can document. So if they see that you're advertising and have a website, the state's probably going to think that you're a business and probably want you to sign up for a sales tax permit and file a tax return and do all that stuff. So let's look a little bit more, but it's like, but a business, I can take losses. I can take all my deductions. I can, okay, so it's the same numbers as a business. So say you paint murals. I know a few mural painters. He has $7,500 for a mural. Not a big one, right? Just a regular mural. You had $500 in spray paint for cost of goods sold. You had $3,500 in other total business deductions like advertising and your website and having somebody take pictures of it and you know post on social media and all that stuff. So you had a $3,500 taxable income. Oh, my, uh, my, my face is in the way. Right. <laughs> I, can I? Yes. I'm afraid to touch these things because then it's like, oh, it just magically shuts off and doesn't work anymore. There we go. $945. Tax due. That's based on being in the 12% tax bracket, paying 15% self-employment tax. If you reported it as a hobby, $7,500 real income, just, just the cost of goods sold, paying tax on $7,000, but it's only same 12% income tax. It's only $900 in tax due. He didn't take the $3,500 in deductions, but yet he's still paying less in taxes overall. So you really need to look at the whole picture um, I was kind of joking with a, an accountant friend of mine. I was like, yeah, I'm teaching a class called taxes for artists. She's like, really? And I was like, yeah, it's going to be a one minute class. Get an accountant. All right. I'm out. Um, so if you, if you're making any considerable amount of money or you feel like you're going to owe, like at the end, you're like, you plug it all into TurboTax and it's like, oh, pay up. You probably want to consult with somebody before you push go, okay? You probably wanna to talk to me or another tax person, like a live human being, not, not. I, I can't say bad things about my competition, but anyway, if they do national advertising or they're a nationally done like software program, not mentioning any names, they're not really there to help you all that much. They're there to make money. So you probably wanna to go to like an enrolled agent or somebody that's an independent tax person. Um, yeah, we're talking about this YOLO thing. Mom. It's like, YOLO is not taxes. That really scared me. She's like, oh, it's the YOLO. I'm like, taxes are not YOLO. <laughs> I don't know. We not want to just crash into this and be like, hey, we'll I'll just put any numbers on here and see if they get audited. I'm like, no, 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 this is not YOLO. Um, uh oh, maybe I have to click here. Oh, it worked. Okay. If you actually have, I'm going to check the time one more time. I'm going actually pretty fast. Look at that. I'm whizzing through this. I'm way ahead. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get it all in. Okay. Hobby income. I'm going to tell you where to put it. So if you decide to do your own taxes and decide you're a hobby, this is what you do with it. You take there's a schedule one, line 8Z, right? <laughs> All y'all online here, you know, you could download the slides, right? Okay, so download the slides and then also download the worksheet because we're going to have a worksheet too. So make sure everybody downloads that. So hobby income gets reported as other income. Okay, it's line 8Z. Uh, if you're using software or something, it's like, did you have any other income? Yeah, hobby income, it's other income. And then you go down to adjustments. Didn't remember adjustments to income, not deductions. Adjustments to income, other adjustments. It's line twenty four Z on Schedule One as well. Uh, of course, not performers, just people with cost of goods sold because you're sold goods, right? Things, solid things. Um, and then you just put it as a hobby cost of goods sold or hobby costs under other adjustments. I wouldn't call it a deduction. I wouldn't put that word on your tax return anywhere. But that's a that's how you put it on there. So it also says here, see see my blogs and videos for info on 1099K. We're gonna have to have a brief talk about 10. Yes, ma'am. If you do hobby income, then you're not paying into social security. That is correct. Um, so would there be a 
I'm, go I'm going to repeat your question for the online people because I don't think they could hear you. So the question was, if you decide to report as a hobby, are you not paying into Social Security and Medicare? And is it a good thing to pay into Social Security and Medicare? I'm going to go with, how old are you? No, <laughs> do not answer that question. Okay. Uh, but it, I'm assuming people that are quite young are going to be like social security and medicare is going to be broke like by the time i ever get to collect it and the retirement age is going to be 92 so they probably don't care if you are ever disabled if you ever get hurt and it, ha it happens if you ever hurt or disabled the amount you paid in from work does affect how much you collect on social security disability uh i got a guy that's 100 percent disabled he was in a horrible accident but he made a ton of money. He makes like 6,000 a month in social security on his disability. I have other people that never work. They make like 650 a month, which isn't nearly on. So do you wanna pay in? Social security is based on your 35 highest years of earnings. Uh, if you are, if you have a W-2 job, you probably paid in enough there. Um, if you don't have a W-2 job and have never worked and this is your only source of work, you may consider reporting it as business income. So you're paying something into social security rather than zero. Um, do I recommend that as an all around thing? No, I mean, it depends on how much you trust the government. Uh, <laughs> I really can't, I, I really can't guide people. I gotta let people make their own decision on that one. Um, but no, if you are a hobby, you are not paying into social security. And if that's your only income, you're not paying anything into social security. So. If you don't have 35, you don't see having 35 years of work, you maybe should, should consider having 35 years of work over the course of your lifetime. So when you are 65, you can get something or 95 or whatever the retirement age is now. I'm, I'm just sure they're just gonna keep raising it. I'm never gonna get there. But anyway, um, no, I didn't go forward. Question? Is that... Oh, we're gonna talk about 1099K. I don't even think I have a slide for that because uh, it's all on, my website. I didn't think I'd have time for it, but let's talk about it. If people are paying you this year and you are getting Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, or something else I don't know about yet, and people are paying you for your art through things like that, and you have made over $600, guess who's getting a 1099K this year? Okay. What do you do with it? It is a very confusing thing because you're going to get one 1099K. And it's going to include lunch. It's going to include, oh, dude, here's some gas money. And it's going to include your art sales. And it's all going to be, it's sent to you by the payer. It's not sent to you by the people who are paying you. It's sent to you by the processor, the bank that actually took the money out of this account and put it into your account. That's the people who are sending 1099K, which is really weird because I know a lot of people if you do commissions, right, you'll get a 1099 for your commissions, right? I know some people are performers, you get a 1099 at the end of the year. Who gets a 1099? Anyway, you get some. You've gotten some. If you do commissions like 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 my uh, mural painters, and you do something for the city or something for the university, they're going to send you a 1099. They're going to ask for your social security number. You're going to have to fill out a form. They're going to send you a 1099. If they pay you with a credit card, the credit card company is going to send you a 1099K and you're going to get a 1099 miss or 1099 NEC for the same money. It's going to look like you earned it twice. This is very poor planning by the US government. Very poor. And it's going to be a thorn in my side during tax season. Uh, it's, it's not going to be easy. So it's very possible that you'll get a 1099k from a payment processor and a 1099 from somebody that paid you with a credit card or with venmo or cash app i was in a irs convention in august there was like i don't know like a thousand of us there a couple thousand i don't know it was like at least a thousand people in this one room and they were like okay this happens and this happens how much is a 1099 for 
And like, there's like four, how many people say this number? How many people say this number? Right. Every, the answers were all over the board and we are tax professionals. We're supposed to be the smart people and nobody knows the right answer on how to send this out. Well, if you paid to the credit card, you take that amount off, you don't send them a 1099 for that because it'll be, everything's going to be double reported. So if you're getting 1099Ks uh, and they won't be mailed, you, if you're using Cash App or Venmo, you're going to have to look just like you get your stuff from the university for the your 1098T if you're paying tuition, right? You got to go into your account and download it. Same thing, you got to go into PayPal. You got to go into Cash App. You got to go into Venmo. Anybody that's paying you, you need to go into your account and see if they sent you a 1099K. This year is going to be all different. They changed the rules. It's going to be a nightmare. So do not throw it in the trash because they are going to be auditing this stuff. Hey, you forgot to put this 1099K. If it's on there twice, we need to put it in and take it off. You need to report that it's there. So uh, if you're getting forms and you don't know where to put them, I don't know how the major software providers are going to handle this and prevent double reporting. I just don't know. That's up to them. I know how I'm going to handle it. See a tax professional if you get a bunch of forms and you don't know what to do with them. All right. Um, hold on. I messed up my slides. All right, here's the big question. So, see where we are in time. Oh, we're doing great. If you're a business, you know you're a business. You make money every year, you're doing a great job, money's coming in, got a little bit left over, you pay the bills, you can almost quit your part-time job at Theo's or wherever, right? All right, we're almost there, you're a business. Do we file on Schedule C? Or are you an S corporation? There's a lot of pressure online. I do read other people's social media. It's like, you have to form an LLC. You have to get it legit. You have to form this, you have to file as an S Corp. You gotta do all this stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. Maybe you don't, okay. Um, let's talk about Schedule C. Schedule C is part of your regular 1040 tax return. It's just a page. Um, all of your profit, is self-employment, right? So all of your profit, we take all the business deductions, what's left over is your profit. It's 100% of it is subject to 15% social security tax. All your profits earned income. Earned income credit, child tax credit. Okay, I gotta keep saying that because one day you probably have kids, you'd be like, hey, that's gonna be important. You need to show earned income. So as corporation, a separate entity is required, which is the whole four LLC thing. I do that for a lot of people. If you need that, that's great. It depends on how much money you're making. Let's see. It is a separate complex tax form. You also have to pay franchise tax and other costs. So forming an S corporation is gonna cost you more money to prepare the taxes. There's more forms, there's more taxes, there's a lot more going on. So it needs to save you more money than you are spending. Uh, so you are split. Now you're just not self-employed. You're either an investor or you're an employee. So you get part money as you, of an investor and part money as working for the company. Does that make sense? So part of it, you pay yourself a salary for doing the work. And part of it, you invested in the company and you're getting a dividend because you're the owner of the company. Like you own stock and that you own all the stock in the company. So. It's split between the two. The part that is work is subject to social security tax. Part that is not work, it's investment income, not subject to social security tax. So that's how it can save you money. So you need to be saving more money by reducing the amount of self-employment tax you're paying than you're paying in self-employment tax the other ways. And you have to pay like, all these other fees, franchise tax, you have to file another tax return. You have to, it's not something you want to do on your own. It's something you need an accountant for. So there's a lot of pressure out there. Let's form an LLC. It'll save you all this money. Generally, I tell people if you're making 15,000 or so in profit, yeah, it'll start saving you money at that point. If you're not, you might as well just pay the self-employment tax because there's so much, it's not going to save you anything. You're going to wind up paying all that money you got to form a corporation, you got to pay the franchise tax, you got to pay an accountant, you got to run payroll. There's a lot of costs. So 
My head's cut off. I keep cutting off my head. I'm sorry, online people. You see my chin. All right. So let's talk about things you can deduct. Now, I do have a handout. Did anybody get the handout? I'm going to send it after. She's going to send everybody that signed up over there uh, with your UARC email address. Where's the sign up? Anyone know where it is? By the pizza. If you haven't signed up with your email address by the pizza, do that before you leave so you can get the handout, which I don't think we have a slide for the handout. Um, my online people, the, uh, there's a link for that in the chat where you can download. We're going to talk about this, but right now we're going to talk about, you know, what can I do that cost of goods sold? If you're selling things, if you're not a performer, uh, administrative things, taxes, legal, accountant, bank fees, that little... All those little bank fees on your business bank account, office supplies. Every time you go to Office Depot, you got to write stuff down. You need sticky notes. It's a business expense. Uh, promotional stuff, ads, small gifts. So you're all artists of some sort. Do you make samples? Do you make little teeny weeny paintings to give out to people and like here buy my big paintings, right? Things like that. Um, I have a lot of crochet artists that do little things. Uh, if you're making little gifts to give away, encourage people to buy your stuff. There, that's a business deduction. That's not cost of goods sold. That's a business deduction. Uh, your website, Facebook ads. Yes, sir. So, okay, I'm going to repeat your question for the online people because they can't hear you. So, the question was. Uh, this is a person who is writing self-published music and you are selling sheet music or they are downloading sheet music? Both, Both downloading and printing yes. copies. Okay, making sheet music. If it's digital and they're buying it online, uh, you don't really have cost of goods sold because it's digital downloads. If you are printing it and you are selling it in a store and you're actually selling a piece of sheet music, that would be different. That would be cost of goods sold. Okay. Uh, people you pay to help you don't forget about that I have a lot of people it's like hey I paid my brother to help me load the truck that's a tax that's a business deduction if you're a business that's a business deduction uh, anybody that helps you and then I have a lot of artists this are, I had a lady that did a she dyed fabric like really I mean that doesn't sound like art but it, it's really cool stuff she did okay but anyway she, and she had to have like two people like on that end and like another person on this end to like drop the fabric in and pick the fabric up out of the dye and it had to be like flat. You have to pay these people. Even if you buy them pizza, it's paying them something. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Good question. Going to repeat it for the people online. What if you were going to a workshop, like say you're a professional dancer and you go to a dance workshop? Absolutely. Continuing education is one of the big things for artists. You have to know what's going on in the world. You have to know what other artists are doing. But you just do. I mean, you got to know what's going on in your field. You got to know what people are buying. So yes, go to the conventions, go to the workshops, learn more stuff, um, go paint with somebody else, that kind of thing. Yes, ma'am in the green. If you are providing the workshop, then you're probably a business to go with. Let's start with that. So it'd be all your cost of putting, putting on, like an event like this, all the cost of putting it on. Uh, absolutely deductible if you're teaching. Uh, and uh, I've had other people say it's almost like a responsibility if you get really good at something to be responsible to teach other people, you know, your craft, you know, show other people how to do it. So yes, absolutely. Anything that it costs you. Let's keep going down here. Occupancy, rent. You're in a storage building. People always forget about them. Their storage unit where they keep all their stuff. Um, utilities, communication. You cannot operate your business without your cell phone. People need to call you and text you to buy stuff. So you need to take a portion of your phone bill. <laughs> That's like the last thing. I was like, how much is your phone bill? Like everybody forgets about that. Uh, your home internet. Uh, if you pay for broadband, if you're doing a lot of online, like uploading and downloading files, I don't know. I have a lot of digital artists. Uh, so look at your home internet as well. Uh, do subscriptions, networking, 
anything you belong to. Do you belong to an artist association? Do you belong to some club? Do you have to pay dues to it? All those dues, tax deductible. Uh, subscriptions, but don't forget about your digital subscriptions too. Adobe, Microsoft 365, like y'all, everybody has that stuff, right? A Canva, right? I love Canva. I'm not a visual artist, so I love Canva. <laughs> uh, interest, if you put a few things on the credit card, you have to calculate what part of that interest is business and what part of it isn't, but you can take your interest. Uh, and don't forget insurance. Sometimes you have to buy insurance for events. So in case anybody gets hurt or you have to buy like on-site insurance, don't forget about that stuff. Uh, travel, personal use of your vehicle. So if you go to, I don't know, Oklahoma City, which is, I hate going to Oklahoma City. It just seems like it's so far. But if you go to drive out to Oklahoma City and get a room for the night to go to some seminar to learn more of whatever kind of art you're doing or to meet with another artist, oh, travel out there and back, definitely. Hotel, definitely. So. You can always work this to your advantage too. Remember I said I went to that accounting convention? Sounds really exciting, right? Like, yeah. a, like a whole room full of nerds, right? It was like a sea of nerds. But where do you think my convention was? Did anybody know where I went? Anybody follow me on Facebook? No, no. It was in Orlando. Do you think I might've had a little fun? My travel to and from Orlando to go to the convention, tax deductible. The four days that I was in that hotel for the three-day convention, tax deductible. Did I have fun for two days before I came home? Betcha. I went to Disney World. Anyway, so uh, personal use of your vehicle, everybody forgets about mileage. That is the one thing that everybody is like really bad at. So get a mileage app. I found one. Um, the one that I had got bought by another company and I was like... If so it's um I put it on here. I wrote it down and now I can't find it. Milo, Milo. It is a mileage app called Milo. It is free mostly. There's a paid version, but the free version works great. Just leave it on when you're driving around in your car, it records where you go. You can turn it off if it's not like business miles, but I mean if you're going somewhere, it'll track your business miles. And that one is free. So it's on one of the slides. I believe it's on that. It's definitely on the handout. Uh, so definitely download the handout. Uh, Milo is free mileage app. I strongly advise using an app. I know you guys are artists. You're not going to be like, oh, I calculated. I went 42.3 miles and I went like 41 point miles and I went to the post office on Wednesday and I did. You're not going to do that. You're not. So get a mileage app. Track your mileage. If you're a business, it's all going to be deductible. If you are not a business and you are a hobby, the cost of picking things up and going to the store is part of your cost to get sold. It's the cost of getting everything into your house. So if you have to drive to Walmart and back, that mileage is tax deductible. If you drive to the river to source pottery clay, that's you. But anyway, I guess... I never thought about it. You know, pottery is like mud. They dig it out of the river and like, like you do that? Ew. Okay, so, so it costs you 18 miles round trip to drive down to the river and source your clay. It's something that's better than zero. Every dollar you can save on taxes is a good dollar. Every dollar that's not in the hands of the government is a good dollar, right? Okay, uh, so track your mileage. Meals, there's lots of rules. Three. Meals with potential clients. So if you go and you have dinner with somebody and they're going to buy a painting from you, or you're going to go somewhere and you're going to be part of their craft fair or something, you're trying to interview, that kind of thing. Potential clients, always deductible. Networking. I mean, oh, I don't have it on here. Networking or meeting with other colleagues. Oh, like coming to this class. That pizza, tax deductible. Well, not really because the university and cash are both nonprofits and don't pay taxes, but that's not the point. So if you were a business and you put on a thing, be like, hey, we're going to have some wine. We're going to have some pizza. We're going to sit around. We're going to talk about art. And hopefully everybody's going to buy my paintings tonight because it's gallery opening, right? All those meals, right? Or if you come to networking, something like that. Third one is if you're out of town. Meals out of town count. So if you are working 
at your studio here in this building on art and you get hungry and you order pizza, is it a tax deduction? No, you're home, you're where you normally work, it's just a meal. Uh, if you bought pizza for somebody that was helping you and that's how you were paying them, okay, I'll go with that. But just lunch because you're hungry, not tax deductible. You can't deduct your own meals. It has to be a business purpose. You have to be doing something. Okay, supplies and equipment, art supplies. Like y'all know what that is, right? Like all the stuff you gotta buy. So, but also things like my potter, again, a kiln, those are expensive. And I have a lot of digital artists and like every other year they buy another $3,200 Mac I something. It's like, why do you need a $3,000 computer? Like, no, 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 I need a $3,000 computer because it's got the screen that's like this big and it's curved and it does all this stuff. I'm like, I don't wanna know, I believe you. Uh, so like big fancy computers, was that a question or? If you're a musician, oh, <laughs> musicians and photographers. Yeah, musicians, they drive past, they drive past Guitar Center and money just flies out of their wallet when they go by. And all the photographers, they're going down college, yeah, they drive past Bedford's, money just flies out of their wallet. If they, I don't know how it happens. Photographers, musicians, oh my gosh, it's like expensive. It is, drummers, oh man. Drummers are the worst. You don't know a drummer. Anyway, <laughs> drummers are the worst. It's like, it's like one set of drums is like three grand. Like, so yeah, your equipment. So if you're a musician, and I, I'm sure I got my musicians online here. I'm gonna wave to all my musicians. I know you're out there. Thanks for watching. Um, all that stuff that is, you know, it's a fortune. I mean, some people, I, I have people, I know a guy who might be watching, at least buys five or six guitars a year. And they're all like, expensive and then they're like custom with like custom like it rewired and um, but anyway it's expensive so your supplies and equipment which would be paint brushes easels a kiln they're expensive i can't believe how much a kiln cost it was like talking about putting stuff on the credit card that was expensive um i'm assuming y'all do stuff I've, i would i use where i usually ask what people do but the people online won't be able to hear you so I'm just going to skip forward. If people want to shout it out, I'll put it on the chat. Okay. What are your questions for the people? So what do you, what, do, what kind of art do you do? So I can make examples. Just anybody, yell it out. Come on, be brave. Last question about scraps. Uh, she bought a kiln two years ago. Was it expensive? She's trying to get hot stabbed in. Uh, How long do we have to declare? That is a great question. Okay, the question was, if bought something and you haven't really made any money yet. So this person bought a kiln, it was expensive, but they haven't really made any money yet. They're still learning to use it. How long do you have before you can deduct it? And the correct answer is forever. You deduct it when you start making money. So you would have to be a business though because it's not cost of goods sold, it's a piece of equipment. It's not, it doesn't, you're not selling the kiln. Um, you're selling the glaze and the paint and the mud and whatever, <laughs> but uh, you're not actually selling the kiln. So you'd have to be a business to deduct it. But the minute you place it in service as a business, which would be when you start making money, that's when you deduct it. So save your receipts, e even if you're not a business yet and you're gonna be maybe in the next year or two. So, Save all your receipts for anything expensive because you can deduct that stuff as startup costs going down the road. That was an extremely good question. In the chat, we've got an author, we've got a muralist, musician, performing artist, comedian, photographer, um, printmaker, musician, performing artist, photographer. So there's a few. Okay. So photographers, I know what those lenses cost. Do we have any photographers here? We got one, we got two. You don't want to admit it because you're gonna have to tell everybody how much money you spend. Yeah, I know. Uh, those lenses, I mean like one lens could be a couple thousand dollars. Like lenses are so expensive. I cry when I do photographers taxes because they never have a profit at the end of the year. <laughs> it's a, it's just, oh, it's expensive. But I do have people that, I've been doing this for years. And then they start trading up on the lenses and, you know, they start selling a few. I do have photographers that make quite a bit of money. So there is, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There really is. Um, but I got, oh, I'm down to five minutes. I think I have another slide, don't I? 
Oh, how to keep track. Do you write it all in a pretty bullet journal? I am so envious of y'all who can do that bullet journal thing. I've had a few people come to my office and I'm just like, can you just make me one of these? It's so pretty. Like, and all their tasks are on the other little squares colored in. And all. I can't do this. I, like, I can't even read my handwriting. I have to type. So you could. You could put it in a pretty bullet journal. I'd be happy with that. It's all written down. I had a lady... She's passed away since, but she reminded me of like SpongeBob's grandma, you know, like, oh, you're just so sweet. And she'd make me cookies and stuff. And I did her taxes and bring me hot tea. It was, anyway, I loved her to death. Fifth grade education. She had no idea how to do bookkeeping. She wrote everything like a story. Paid Johnny $50 to Mo number eight. Hey, and they're like, just not even on the next slide. Paid Fred $50. To, oh my. And it was just like a storybook. I had to read through the whole thing. It was terrible. But it was all there. It was all there. I didn't have to pull teeth. Like, where's your phone bill? Where's this? Where's that? It was all there. So if you want to put it in a pretty bullet journal, uh, envelopes or sandwich bags, I get a lot of those. Uh, chances are you're going to sort it out wrong. So don't even bother. Um, I prefer you don't do that. Uh, most people charge you a lot extra. I'm, I'm pretty lenient with people that bring me stuff like that. Email me 500 pictures from your phone. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do not take a picture of every receipt and stick it in my portal and send me 500 receipts. No, there's a better way to do that. If you like taking pictures of receipts, we're going to get to that. Um, a shoebox mixed with all your personal receipts. Oh, please don't do that. Oh, man. It's like, I'm going through this box of receipts once and it was like roses, cologne, and birth control devices. I was like, I do not need to see this, okay? Do, do not put your personal receipts in with your business receipts. Oh, I still have nightmares about that guy. But anyway, <laughs> best way to do it is software, okay? Microsoft Excel, if you know how to use it and you will stick with it, Microsoft Excel is a perfectly good way to keep track of all your stuff. If that's something you like, I'm thinking I got a room full of artists, like what's Excel? So it's okay. <laughs> I know most young people learn it in school and it's a thing. If it's not what you're going to stick with, don't use it. Expensify gives you 25 free receipts a month. It is not taking pictures of your receipts. It is AI. It is, it reads your receipts. It takes your phone. It looks at it. It pulls it up on here and it says, oh, you went to Lowe's. You spent $25 and 60 cents. You used this credit card. You were at this location of Lowe's. It reads everything off the receipt. You just have to tell it, oh, art supplies. Got it. You get 25 free receipts a month with Expensify. It makes it so easy if you're not buying a ton of stuff. It's a great way to capture the little guys. And then you can throw the paper away and don't have to try to remember to save it. Uh, Wave is 100% free. It is very much, uh, well, notice at the bottom, QuickBooks, very not free, very easy to mess up. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't use QuickBooks. Please don't spend money on QuickBooks. Wave does everything QuickBooks does. It's just as easy to mess up. It does everything it does and it's completely free and it does less. So it tries to sell you less and it's a little less confusing. Uh, Wave is a lot easier to use and hundred percent free. Do not pay for QuickBooks. Just everyone's like, you gotta have QuickBooks. They're the same people are like, you gotta have an LLC. Like, no, everybody wants you to spend money. Do not spend money on stuff you don't need. And that's a lot of it. So best bet, find you a software you will use. Definitely uh, Milo is my favorite for, uh, Mileage, keeping track of how far you're going, and Wave or Expensify if you're not using a whole bunch. Uh, both are free. You have to sign up for an account. Wave is 100% free. It doesn't matter what you do with it. It's still free. Expensify, once you get over 25 receipts, they're going to be like, hey, pay up. But it does a little bit more. You get AI receipts on Wave, too. So, super easy. All right. Compliance issues. If you're a business, last slide. We there? time we got one, one more slide compliance issues i'm going to go through this real quick if you are a business and you are selling things or doing photography you need to have a sales tax permit 
The state is not joking around. Uh, if you decide you're a business, you start filing as a business, you need to get a sales tax permit if you are selling things or if you are doing photography. Franchise tax, if you form an LLC, it's $150 a year in the state of Arkansas. Don't forget about that. County property tax, if you're a business, all your assets, like your kiln and your $3,200 computers and your guitars, should be taxed and reported to the county. And then you pay property tax on them every year. Fun, right? 1099s, if you pay people to help you, it is not an option. If you are, if you are a business, you need to send out 1099s if you are paying people to help you. Uh, insurance, that's up to you. But uh, if you're doing anything dangerous, if you're painting murals, you're on somebody else's property and you could very well get hurt or hurt somebody or drop something on their head if you're on a ladder on somebody else's property, you want to consider insurance, get yourself a good independent insurance agent. City business license and zoning, last thing. Uh, Bill requires a city business license even if you're working in your home. If you're a business, you need to register. Pretty much all the cities require a city business license now. Um, so even if you're working at home, get a business permit. They're usually like 10 or 20 bucks a year. It gets you on a registry. It's like, hey, I'm an artist. But zoning's another thing. I had another guy like, yeah, I'm gonna start fixing motorcycles in my backyard. I'm like, I don't think so. When your neighbors think about that and they're like, I don't know. I was like, you're going to have to have a zoning meeting. If you have customers coming to your place where you live and there's people in and out all the time, they're going to think you're a drug dealer and they're going to report you. Like, don't upset your neighbors, okay? You can't have, if you are running a business out of your house, you just have to like work at home and like see your customers somewhere else. Don't have customers come to your house or you're going to have neighbor trouble and zoning trouble. That's zoning is your neighbors getting mad because you're using your house as a business and you're not licensed for that. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, we made it. I made it through. Look at that. I only went through.